meeting board of the St. John um, Hudson Board of Education. Uh, welcome all the visitors, Rita, Carol. <laughs> Are there any additions or changes to the agenda? Uh, no, it's something that's not in the packet. It's it's on the uh, closing business items already for resignations and contract. We need to approve a senior class sponsor. But just wanted to let you know it's not. It wasn't in your packet, but it's on the agenda. But <coughs> we don't technically need to add anything. So just approve the agenda as presented. Yeah, motion for the. To approve the agenda. Madam President, I move that the board approve the agenda. Second. And then the second mm -hmm. to approve the agenda as presented. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carries 6 0. Um, on to the consent agenda. We have some information in front of you. The activity fund report was not in your packet, it's included as a separate document there. Nothing's really changed from last month. We haven't done done much of anything there. So we going to update on that. One uh, financial report I will not be providing for you anymore unless uh, uh, you think we need to is the bank balance report. Uh, a lot of times I just end up explaining why from the 30th to the 1st or the 31st to the 1st is the uh, cash flow is a little different. Uh, from year to year. Uh, I, I included that previously because the uh, when they changed the 20 mills going to the state rather than to us, it really did change our cash flow. So I did include one uh, graph there that kind of shows you the last three years of what our cash flow looked like. Uh, you can see when we got the 20 mills we need to manage it very, very carefully because we'd get pretty low and then there'd be a large jump with our tax distribution. <clears throat> and we still have a large tax distribution, it's just not for the general fund anymore. So <clears throat> I guess the wild swings have leveled out a bit. So I won't provide that every month. <clears throat> we see how much cash we have on the books anyway. So I do want to bring up those things for you. If there are no questions, <coughs> Mr. Mayo, entertain a motion for <coughs> approval. Madam President, I move the board approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Thanks. We move and seconded to approve the consent agenda. 2016-17 um, consent agenda as presented. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion may pass 6-0. I guess it's not 2016-17. <clears throat> Sorry. We'll move into the open hearing. Um, are there any patron comments? Let's skip that. None. Hearing none, we'll go into the budget hearing then. <clears throat> do you have things you want to show? Or? Yep. Yep, okay. I, do. I do. That's our first business item. Uh, Mr. Allen is going to check, make sure that door is unlocked upstairs. It is, but this is kind of an important deal if uh, somebody doesn't have the opportunity to have a say. So let's wait for him to get back okay. before we uh, close the hearing, I guess. That's all right. information. Uh, you have a <coughs> presentation there I want to go go over with you here. I'll give you a paper copy if you'd like to take notes there, if there's anything you want to remember. Um, 
some things for you to keep in mind. Uh, uh, what, what goes into our budget? What affects our budget? These are the basic things. There's a lot of things that play into it, but uh, legislation and then, of course, how did we finish the year? What's our cash balance doing each year? I pay close attention to that. Of course, our valuation. Enrollment doesn't play a big part now with the block grant funding, but uh, it, it will. Uh, federal funds is not something we talk about a lot, but if federal funding gets cut, we have to make that up somewhere. Um, and then tax collection rates, uh, some of the behind the scenes things, uh, neighborhood revitalization, that, re that affects our tax rate, uh, what we have to collect. So there's, there are a lot of moving parts uh, with the tax collection that, that people don't really see that affect the budget from one year to the next. You know, uh, some legislation. Uh, right now we're, we're operating under the block grant formula. It's been adjusted a little bit. Uh, general state aid will be the same as what it was in the 14-15 year. Recall that last year they knocked off a little bit for the extraordinary need aid. Uh, uh, it's interesting they still take off for that, but that is not being funded by uh, the, the state's budget. It's being funded in a different way. They did change the way they equalized the local option budget. Uh, we did not previously get any of that aid, uh, but this year we will get about 140000 of that aid. Uh, it essentially just replaces that extraordinary need aid. And uh, legislation that, uh, I guess, with the legislature, what they're going to have to deal with is the upcoming court case uh, for the adequacy part. We call it. They talked about the equalization part. Uh, before in the Supreme Court, now they're talking about is it enough money? Uh, so that's that's coming. Uh, another thing is it's not really legislation, but it's going to take legislation to change it. It's, the state's broke. Uh, and the governor doesn't believe so. They tell us otherwise, but uh, things are not are are not good. So all of those things play a part in in. Uh, in the legislative aspect of it. So what's our cash balance situation look like? It's important to keep in mind the difference between the spendable and the total cash balance. So I've included the last four years. So in July, where'd we end up? Uh, spendable would be not including capital outlay, not including bond and interest, uh, local option budget. When we end up with a cash balance there, we can't spend it. Uh, so there's some of those things. So you can see the change uh, here. We're up about 19000 over a year ago. That's how we finished the year. Uh, two years of, of, of positive gain. Um, even though our total cash balance here went down just a little bit, it's not concerning. Uh, we did go up a little bit. So that, that's a positive. We did not use capital outlay funds this year to pay our custodians. We did that last year. And uh, we also did not collect some of our uh, federal money for small and rural schools. We choose whether to do that from year to year or not. Uh, we're actually going to take two years' worth this year to help pay for our Chromebooks. So, so um, I feel real good about where we're headed. Uh, this just shows it graphically. Uh, you notice this big drop here uh, looks concerning, but that was when we paid off our bond. Uh, we had a lot of money in the bank. Uh, we kept one year's worth of payment in the bank all along, and then uh, we paid that off early. Uh, the upward trend is positive, and again, like I mentioned, we even had less revenue to use. Uh, and the spendable cash. We're still not where I would recommend. We're about 60% of the level that I, I think we should be. Should be upwards of 600,000. Um, why do we need that? We're obviously getting by where we're at. Uh, unforeseen costs. Uh, God forbid we'd have a lawsuit or something. Uh, we don't have a lot of money in the bank to take care of something like that. Uh, football field light. You know, situations like that. Um, it, if we have more in the bank at the start of the year, it allows us to be not as reliant just on what the state does. If they cut mid-year, we've got to react immediately. We can't wait. We can't 
finish out the year or go a year the way we're operating, we have to make those decisions right away. Um, stop me if you have questions. Uh, what's happening with our property values? The total valuation is down slightly. Uh, we all know we took a big hit last year. So uh, 43 million down to 35, down to 33 this year. What does that do? Well, uh, the lower valuation means it takes more mills to levy the same number of dollars. So higher valuation makes a lower mill levy. Uh, lower valuation is higher, uh, essentially. Our assessed valuation per pupil, that's how they figure whether we get aid or not, whether we are considered a poor school district or a rich school district. Uh, we went from 51st out of 286 districts to 82nd. So that does qualify us for, uh, for state aid. And truthfully, the timing was perfect with the legislation. In a typical year under the old formula, we would not have had the opportunity to get any aid. Last year, we went and begged for money in Topeka with that extraordinary needs <coughs> aid. In a typical year, we'd get zero. And then this year, would be, we would be able to pick up the aid like we are now. So really, the timing was perfect. Um, the extraordinary need aid is available this year, but it is funded by the sale of the State Bioscience Authority. Um, it's been in the news a little bit. The state is looking to sell that, uh, those assets. Uh, anything up to $25 million will go to the state's general fund. Over $25 million will fund the extraordinary needs aid. Um, I don't think we would have qualified based on our valuation just one year. It had to be, I think, two and a half mils, and that wasn't that big of a difference for us. Uh, but if we would have qualified, uh, the state would say, yes, you qualify, we're going to award you this money, but we need to wait till December to see if we have it. So some districts are held in limbo. They don't know. They've been told they'll get the money, but they don't know. They won't know until December, and it doesn't look like that's going to sell anyway So uh, for what they need it to. So if you wonder why, why we didn't apply for that, uh, number one, it wasn't really available to us, and uh, number two, we wouldn't know anyway until December, and I don't think it's going to happen. So there's graphically what our valuation has done. You can see we're about as low as we have been since 2009-10, all related to oil and gas. Our enrollment with our block grant, we're stuck with the 1415 figures. For us, that's good. You'll notice on there that's been our highest enrollment. So, again, timing on this block grant has worked out well for us. Uh, so the new formula will, is going to include enrollment somehow. So we really need to keep that in mind. We can't just dismiss it. Our federal funds, I won't go through this in detail, but we have lots of federal funds. An example is Title I. Uh, Mr. Olive went through a lot of work to change that from a targeted program where we would have to have a title teacher and only certain kids could be in there to now we can pay salaries of different people and help every kid with those funds. Uh, this is an example, 55000 is what we get. It's up a few hundred dollars, almost $1,000. So we pay attention to that. Is it going up? Is it going down? We know that ahead of time. So uh, We get a little bit for professional development. Uh, we get a little bit for our English language learners. And uh, our after school program, of course, is just grant funded. It can only be used for that. Uh, we're on the last year of that grant. Perkins funds th flows through ESDAC. It's not a lot of money, but uh, that's some other federal funds and then that small rural schools grant that I mentioned before. We'll use our two years uh, this coming year for pay for Chromebooks. So that freed up some of these funds in our capital outlay. So what did our budget look like this year? It has been published. Notice of here, a 
lots of figures there. Um, what what is the budget? Really, it's it's the authority to spend money. It's it's this board's authority to spend that money that we have. So if we don't have the money, we can't spend it. And also, if, if the board doesn't grant the authority to spend it, we can't spend it. Um, so really, it shows how much we expect to get in money, uh, in revenue for the year. The crazy thing about this budget is we establish it, and then in June, we know exactly what it's going to be uh, at the end of the year. Uh, block grant is a little more stable. So our mill levy... We have the three funds you'll see on the right side. Clear at the right is our uh, budget uh, for our general fund, our LOB, and uh, capital outlay. And then we have two for the rec commission, which is really just a flow through. Uh, keep in mind those mill levies. Uh, we don't budget mills, we budget the dollars. And then the mills are estimated, so after Final valuations come in that's tweaked a little bit each year. You know this last year's capital outlay levy, 7993. We levied 8 mills, but that, again, that was an estimate based on the dollars, so it came in a little lower in the end, if that makes sense. Uh, for us, one mill generates about $33,000 in tax revenue. Uh, you'll see here what our mill levy has done in recent past. You can see it on that sheet as well. General fund is always 20 mills. Our local option budget has gone up because of our valuation drop. And capital outlay, we've tweaked that uh, to help keep our mill levy uh, fairly stable. So where do we rank as far as our mill levy in the state? Uh, we're in the bottom half of the state, uh, the lower half, about 47th percentile is where we're at uh, last year. The middle was 52 mils, the lowest was 28, the highest was 76 mils. So just to give you an idea of where mill levies are in the state. So here's graphically what our mill levy has done. It's as high as it has been. This is interesting. This really shows the, the dramatic effect of the valuation. You can see the tax dollars that we levy is actually as low as it's been in a long time. Uh, it's slightly above what it was in 910. Uh, so even though our mill levy is higher, the dollars that we're pulling in from our taxpayers is, is less. So what does that mean? Well. Oil and gas, their share of that is lower. Everybody else's share is higher. It's what it's done. It's changed the proportion. So our general fund is 20 mils, like I mentioned. Uh, general state aid is virtually the same. Um, our old system was based on enrollment and base state aid per pupil. That's what they're going to be talking about with this court case. Um, one interesting thing, you look on the back side, you'll see the general fund budget. This is why it's very complicated. It's tough for us to talk to patrons about. You know, I've heard that school spending is an all-time record. Well, look at our general fund budget here. Um, it's hard to see up here, but this... Uh, down here, the total expenses. You'll see that. Look from 1415 to 1516. What did that do? Went up a little bit. Went up by about 140,000 or so. So it seems like we got more money, right? Well, look up a little bit and you'll see the line that says Capers Aid. How many dollars did we receive in Capers Aid in 1415? Zero. 
We got it. It just didn't flow through the general fund. Then in 1516, $181,000 flowed through our general fund budget. No more dollars came into our checking account, into our district. It just showed up on the general fund. So it shows we spent $140,000 more, but 180 of that was just capers. So now we can say your general fund budget has gone up. And actually what the state gave us is under general stated right here. On that line. And actually see from two years ago to last year, it actually went down. So when the state says funding went up, it did not. So I won't go through every aspect of this, but that's one example of, of how how these figures have been tweaked to show that uh, we spend more than we actually do for political purposes. Now, how do you explain that to the people you talk to? That's hard. It's complicated. It's the supplemental general fund, which is our local option budget. Why they have two names, I don't know. Uh, we use that for our operating budget. It's not a it's not a local option. It's needed. Uh, we're talking about nine hundred and eighty thousand uh, dollars. We would shut down if we could if we didn't have that. So it's up about one mil from last year. And again, our equalization aid, like I mentioned, is really just replacing that extraordinary need aid. So that increased mill levy is only due to the valuation drop. The dollars last year are the same as the dollars this year. The budget has not gone up. Capital outlay, uh, we have more flexibility. It used to just be for building needs and equipment needs. Now we can uh, pay custodial salaries, maintain equipment, uh, things like that. We don't do a lot of that, um, but we have that op option. Uh, we can go up to eight mills. We use that for our lease purchase payment. Uh, so we don't have a lot of room on top of that. Uh, and this is the one that we, uh, the mill levy, we adjust to tweak the overall mill levy. You'll notice in the in the budget on the notice of hearing, uh, we're budgeting six hundred and two thousand dollars for that budget. I don't plan to spend that. If something were to happen and we need to spend it then it's in the budget that we have the authority to do that. So that's one example of why, uh, of where the budget seems a lot higher than it was last year. So we're comparing what we're budgeting compared to what we actually spent last year. So that might be a question that comes up. Um, so I guess in summary, what does our budget uh, look like? Our cash balance is going up. That's a positive. Our mill levy, uh, basically flat. Um, our mill levy is higher than it has been in quite some time, but the total dollars that we're levying is lower. Um, lots of concern about our state's finances. Um, one other thing I put on this sheet. You will notice down, uh, uh, I don't have a good way to show this, but you'll see less transfers. There's a line that says less transfers. We transfer money out of the general fund to special ed. And we transfer it out of the general fund to CAPERS. And then it's expensed again. So we subtract out those transfers so it doesn't show us being spent twice. That's why that is. So. Uh, what are we actually spending? You want to look at the net. USD expenditures. Hope that gives you some good information on our budget. Um, are there any questions? So in the last two years, our mill gone down eight eight thousand no uh, eighteen. The total taxes? Yeah. It's gone from uh, two point one million to one point seven million. So 
but the, the actual, actual mill. mill. The actual mill rate has when gone up 3.4. In two years. Okay. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and every bit of that is valuation. You bear with me for one second. I've got a good graph here that shows. Yeah, I'll send it to you. It shows. You know, the one graph we show the, the taxes levied, or the, the valuation, and the other is our mill levy, and they're almost opposite. Yeah, one goes down, one goes up. I'll send that to you. So my recommendation is to approve the budget as, as presented. Uh, the board has options to decrease the mill levy. It would be from capital outlay, I wouldn't recommend. Uh, I'm messing with the LOB, so. Welcome for public comments, too. Do you have any questions? Okay. Not on the entertainment motion. Approve all the... Madam Vice President, I move that the board approve the 2016-17 budget as presented. Second. It's been moved and seconded to uh, approve the 2016-17 budget as presented. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Motion carries 6-0. <clears throat> we'll close the hearing and return to our regular meeting. Uh, first item on the business items is uh, um, one to one, well, second item, I guess, one to one computer policy. There was a policy sent to you earlier. Yeah, we briefly looked at it last month. Uh, was, uh, 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 Mr. Watts was here to present it. We tweaked a couple of things, just minor, minor changes. Uh, so I'd recommend that we approve the policy. If there's any questions, Mr. Alvin, I can answer them. I talked to one teacher the other day and he was looking forward to it, so. I'm going to turn this fan on if anybody can't hear or Madam Vice President, I move the board approve the Chromebooks uh, policy <coughs> as presented. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to the board to approve the Chromebooks policy as presented. Any discussion? Hearing then all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Motion carried 6 0. On to board policy updates. Uh, that's a separate document. Um, this is the second reading of the policy, similar to the other one. Uh, lots of legal changes, nothing, uh, nothing major. Uh, we discussed them last month, so if you have any other questions, I'll be glad to answer them. I'm approving these, and I will add them to the Total policy book and send it to you. Madam Vice President, I move that the board approve the board policy updates as presented. Second. It's been moved and seconded for the board to approve the board policy updates as presented. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carries 6 0. Board goals. Final draft. Uh, this is one of those those items we've uh, worried about a lot. That we've got to get it just right, and uh, just the way we want it. And I think I was worrying about that too much um, because it really just ends up being a working document. If there's things we want to add and change, and 
it's up to you all to do that if you'd like. So, uh, on the one side here uh, is, is something we established a long time ago with our, uh, what we want our district to look like uh, with our core values and that purpose, passion, and pride. The second page is the goal statement. Um, we had our five broad goals and then uh, Mr. Olive and I have visited about some things and uh, some things that we've we've already talked about. Uh, there's some strategies, some things we want to pay attention to within each goal and focus on for the year. Uh, so I, I'd recommend that the board uh, approve the goals just so we have a formal statement and then those strategies as we move along we can adjust as needed. For the board to approve the board goals for 2016-17 as presented. Any discussion? <laughs> Hearing none, all those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carried. <laughs> Professional development plan. Uh, each, uh, every five years, we need to update our professional development plan. This spells out procedures for teachers to earn credit uh, for relicensure. We have a committee that meets about those points and gives input for staff development. Uh, this this plan governs that. It's been updated for the next five year period. So I'd recommend that the board approve it. There was one place in there when I was reading through it. It also included school board. It does. Um, and we I think Carl might be the uh, professional, the PDC yeah. uh, committee appointee, and uh, no, we're, we're, all we've done the past two years is meet for points, to approve points. It's, uh, I didn't want to remove that, because I think it's a positive thing if we, if we are focused more on what is our staff development, and frankly, nobody has the time. We meet to approve points. Guys, the administrators, you go figure out what we're going to do for our staff development. So, ideally, this is how it would be, and there would be lots of input. But honestly, because of time, we don't do it quite right. I thought it meant that we had a Board meetings. Bring donuts. Okay. So that's a committee. You want to have your donuts. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Right. We, we have to. We never have donuts. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 Next year, I will. On the board of twenties, I will put which ones have food. Get more volunteers. Well, they don't meet long enough to even eat. To tell you the truth, yeah. usually. Uh -huh. Right. <clears throat> so, at least one I went to, four I went to. Okay. Madam Vice President. Yes. I move that the board approve the professional development plan for 2016 to 2021. Second. <clears throat> it's been moved and seconded for the board to approve the professional development plan from 2016 to 2021. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries six zero. The library budget. Inner local hasn't been on this yet. Do we need to before we vote? Well, we have two board members and they've said they're okay with the budget and the and two I'm library good. board members have okay. voted that's on fine. it. So I talked to Laura and she said we don't need to. Okay, that's that's fine. It's you let out Yeah. <laughs> it really seems like I'm in budget government. 
it really seems like I'm it's anti collaboration. <laughs> but really, if we can save the time. That's fine with me. It's intended too. Yeah. That's fine with me. I it means everybody's happy. I, I went through the first one. I went through the budget planning for this one. Yeah, and the library board has taken a more active role than in the past. And I think in the past it was more the the two city library appointees and the two board members would, would visit more about it. I'm not sure, but now the library board has really taken an active interest in it. Okay, very happy. Yeah. <laughs> she she talked about it. keeps us on top of on top of it. <clears throat> and really, it's not much different than last year. Or so. Tweaked things and got that sharing arrangement. I think uh, in a better spot. It seems like everybody's been more happy with that. It's all spelled out. We do have uh, this. This will show up on your monthly board report. The Seventy-two fund. Our cash balances. Uh, we do have money in there. Uh, can we use that? Can we just use that? Um, my recommendation is to not touch that. Uh, you'll notice we take $40,000 from our investments, that's what this is here, uh, for library operations. If investments would tank or if there would be a problem there, uh, we could draw these down instead of drawing down the investments. Uh, so I think that should remain. Again, maybe we just carry that on our books. What, what's the 72 fund? Uh, started in the 19th No, I don't know. I, I, the number, I don't think, has any significance. It's mm -hmm. just one of our budget funding numbers. It used to be that a lot, some of the expenses would come out of that fund and some would come out of the general fund. And we've switched to everything comes out of the general fund. So we see it right there. Uh, what we do is all of the revenue goes into that 72 fund, and then we write a check from the 72 fund to our general fund, basically, to help fund those library operations. And that's what you see here in the actuals. So the library contribution was the investment interest in the city mill levy and all those things. So we've streamlined a lot of that and made it easier for everybody to see. Board, this board to see, for the city library board to see, for patrons to see. We didn't have some revenue here and some revenue there and some expenses here and some there. And so revenue goes in here into our general fund and all the expenses come out of the general fund. So it's, all, it's all spelled out right there. It's been a long process to come to that. Madam Vice President, the move to board approve the library budget is presented. Second. Been moved and seconded to for the board to approve the library budget as presented. Any discussion? Hearing that all those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Nay. Motion carries six zero. <clears throat> Special education co-op assessments. Page fifty three. I'd ask the board to approve the assessment schedule. Uh, the interlocal board has already approved those assessments. Uh, it's gone up significantly the past few years. It's not a surprise. Uh, why has it gone up? Uh, partially because state funding has remained flat for special education. Every year the amount they pay per teacher goes down. Uh, why? Because they all the state has to do is maintain a, a certain expenditure level to meet maintenance of effort and get federal funds. They're not adding more dollars in, even though it's cost more. Uh, the second thing is we've provided insurance to for the paraprofessionals. Uh, why did we do that? I'd like to say it's because there are poor state people in, the, in our district and, uh, and we want to treat them right, but it's really it's a requirement. Obamacare. So, uh, in the end, it's, it's what needed to be done, but it's almost a million dollars additional expense for the call off. So, that's why we're here. It's a tough pill to swallow, but it's a 
my recommendation is to approve the document. Madam Vice President, I move that the board approve the special education assessments as presented. Second. I move and second that the board approve the special education assessments as presented. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Motion carries 6 0. Onward to shared staff agreements. Um, I, I told you I would have them with me. Um, one, we're waiting on ours uh, for Mrs. Souter. Stafford will pay us half of her salary costs and then they pay her directly for her mileage. We do the same thing for Mrs. Volker. Now, why don't we have the agreement for Mrs. Volker? Because they haven't finalized their negotiations yet. Uh, so they don't know what the final salaries will be. So I really just have the one agreement to approve, but I think we can, this board can approve the same sharing agreement that we've had in the past. Options. So rather than, I guess, approve the agreements as presented, um, I'd ask that the board approve the shared staff arrangements that we've had, uh, that we had last year. I guess would be the proper word, if that makes sense. Madam Vice President, I move the board approve the shared staff agreement we had last year. That's fine. That's okay. Just fine. All right. It's been moved and seconded to, for the board to approve the shared staff agreements as presented. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Uh, Opposed? Aye. Nay. Motion carries 6 0. Okay. Fee schedule correction. I had on my fee schedule that the board approved. Breakfasts were two oh five and a dollar seventy five here. And that was not correct. This is these are the figures that were last year at the breakfast cost last year. So on the one that we approved I had it I had it wrong. In the newsletter it was correct. I had changed it in the newsletter, but for some reason I didn't have it right here. Uh, the other thing that I did not have was this technology fee. Uh, the fee for students who qualify for free lunch is $25. Uh, textbook fees we waive it completely. Uh, the technology fee, everybody needs to pay something. So I did not have that note in there. So I'm asking that the board approve this and uh, those adjustments on the fee schedule. So what happens if you don't have $25? Madam President, I move that the board approve the update fee schedule after the end. Second. Okay, so we have second the board approve the updated fee schedule as presented. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carried. Oh, I was going to switch it up. Okay, communications, board members, do you have anything to report on activities? Carl? I don't have any this time. We have election officers at the special ed co-op, just like here, they speak the same. The big thing this week is enrollment tomorrow from uh, noon to 7 in the cafeteria area. Um, I put our, I guess, it should be more of an estimated numbers and anticipated. That's just based on last year's numbers at the end of the school year, how many were, were in each grade. So um, high school-wise, we're expecting approximately 105, junior high 42. Um, 
not a big deal this year, but you can kind of tell looking at that list that um, when this year's senior class uh, graduates and then that eighth grade class comes into high school, there's going to be a, a pretty significant drop in our enrollment. Um, quite likely that, that athletically and stuff that we'd probably drop to the, the 1A class depending on what, what other um, schools do. And then you know, the, the year after that, maybe just a slight, but some of it will depend on and I don't anticipate us getting 15 move-ins, but you know, it's, it's quite likely that we're going to drop significantly after next year. Um, fall sports parents meeting Thursday night. Um, Keisha also requires now that, that all athletes are um, educated on concussion, so um, we, we decided to just throw it in with that same night, invite uh, athletes to come to that, and uh, Lisa Cornwell's agreed to come. and do the presenting, There's either they can either watch videos, which I did that on the, the National Federation website, they're not the most uh, exciting things to sit through, it kind of gets repetitive, so rather than do that, we chose to have her come in, they do allow a professional to come in and present on that, so um, any athlete participating has to go through it at some point, so if they're playing basketball and track, being there Thursday covers it for the whole year. Um, if a kid for some reason can't be there and is only going to go out for track, then they can do that training at a later time, but they have to do it before they can participate in their sport. Um, fall sports kick off next Monday. Next Friday, new staff orientation. We really don't have a whole lot of new staff this year. I'm in the high school, mostly just uh, Justin Smith, high school math, so um, kind of go through some procedures and stuff with him, kind of get him comfortable before the rest of the teachers report back, which is August 22nd, two weeks from today, so sneaking up on him pretty quick. Um, First day of school, August 25th, uh, very next day is Tiger Pride Night where we kind of have our open house, um, uh, followed by the fall sports scrimmages starting out at the football field and then kind of breaking off from there. Chromebooks are in, uh, technology director Brian Watts, he's been working at getting those um, set up, putting them, um, hooking them up through our network, I think he's pretty much done with that and kind of after we get through enrollment, we'll be working with a, a plan for him as to how we're going to kind of roll those out to, to kids when we're going to get them in their hands and whatnot. And probably quite a bit of our professional development this year will be geared towards those and how they can be used effectively in the classroom so that we're kind of, kind of maximizing um, their potential and really getting out of them what we can. Um, don't have this on the list. I put a, a card on your uh, spot. Um, Randy Watson, uh, Commissioner of Education in Kansas, when he took over about a year ago in that position, he's kind of worked pretty close with the State Board of Education. They've kind of been coming up with a vision and, and things that they really want to focus on. They've kind of they've created the, uh, the vision that Kansas will lead the world in success of each, uh, will lead the world in the success of each student. That's kind of their vision. And these are some things that um, they're going to focus on, um, you know, providing preschool and all-day kindergarten. Uh, all-day kindergarten is not required right now, but they want to get to where every every district has the opportunity pr to provide that. Um, kind of talked last meeting about school culture and, and recognizing that not every kid has to go go to a KU, K State, you know, get a four-year degree. That it's okay to go to a technical school or a Beloit or something like that. Get some type of certificate in a year or two and, and enter the workforce. Um, and you know, not push every kid to a, to a four-year degree because that's not necessarily for everyone. Um, new roles for counselors and social workers kind of focused on those individual plans of study, kind of having those discussions with kids where what field they might want to go into and if that's the case, what are some, some classes that they can take in high school rather than everybody taking the exact same classes and, and then having to specialize when they get to college, maybe kind of figuring out some of those things right now, what their interests are. Um, business and industry partnerships, uh, job shadowing, that type of thing, uh, community service, um, and then finally just you know focusing around the student and not just the system kind of goes with the, the individual plans of study, you know, focusing on what's best for the kids rather than, than putting everybody in the same stuff. And so they're kind of they're working at how they're gonna how that's gonna play into accreditation and whatnot, but those are kind of some areas that they're they're focused on right now. So. Any questions for Mr. Allen? Thank you. Mr. Meyer. Our Learning Center, uh, we've got training plan for the Odysseyware software. Uh, Mrs. Knight and Mr. Allen here next week. Uh, we need new carpet in there. I don't know if you saw that. It's, uh, I, 
had that in the works, but it's uh, we need to take a different route. I don't think we'll get it done in time. So we'll get that carpet good and clean. Maybe Christmas break or next summer we'll replace that carpet. But it's awful in there. Uh, we, we've got to recruit uh, the adult learners that we've had, uh, so we have them in our program. Uh, but really focused on that. The credit recovery, kids that uh, have uh, failed the class, uh, any online classes that uh, have a structured environment to be in rather than in the cafeteria or uh, something like that. Uh, so that's in the works, well on the way here. Uh, it will be a learning year for us uh, with that learning center. Make sure we do it right. Uh, professional development coming up at the beginning of the school year here. Uh, we have a lot to uh, to cover. Uh, suicide training, uh, an hour is required, which uh, a lot of these things end up being hoops we need to jump through, but really things we, we ought to be talking about. Uh, emergency safety intervention, sexual harassment, bloodborne pathogens. We have a lot of compliance things to do. So sometimes it feels like we've got to get all this stuff out of the way so we can talk about actually teaching and learning. Uh, we'll be focused on our elementary math and then high school, of course, the technology. Uh, Mr. Ellard mentioned Dr. Randy Watson. He's going to be here uh, to present to our staff uh, on that first day uh, to present to everybody. So that's where our focus is. Uh, I did put it on here because we haven't really discussed it, this transgender situation. Uh, recall that Department of Education and Department of Justice essentially said whatever gender a student identifies with, that's the restroom or locker room that that kid should be allowed to use. Didn't that just get overturned this week? It did. There's a U.S. Supreme Court, um, at least for the time being, has overruled that, said that's not right. Uh, the State Board of Education has also said that's not right. So, uh, people have asked, what, what do we do? Well, we don't have any situations uh, with any specific people that we need to deal with, but uh, we would provide a separate facility uh, for someone to use on their own if there's an issue. Uh, we're not letting anybody that wants to go in the girls' locker room. Uh, that's not going to happen. The guidance from the Department of Justice says otherwise, but can't in good conscience allow that. So uh, I did want to bring that up in one of our meetings. And that's kind of our situation here. Anybody have any questions about that? I'm sure you have some comments about that. <laughs> so we do have facilities if that arises. We we do. We have a facility over here. Um, in this building, you're saying? Mm -hmm. in, in, right up there. Oh, okay. okay. So what about in the, on the main campus? I, you know, I don't think so. There's nothing over there. No, nothing private. I'd come over here. You should put that teacher's bathroom in over oh, there. Over the yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we can do that. Well, that's my burden thing. <laughs> I don't want to put a whole lot of thought and effort into what will we do because it might not ever come to fruition. I know, I just, I just yeah. <laughs> uh, Kansas Teacher of the Year, uh, Jill Christie has been nominated for uh, from our district for Kansas Teacher of the Year. Uh, they have a reception uh, and dinner for her on uh, September 10th. There is uh, 16 elementary and 11 secondary. Nominees from our region. That's in Wichita. So it's just the region four. Uh, I plan to go to that uh, September 10th. If you'd like to go, uh, please let me know uh, this week. Uh, dinner's thirty-six dollars. I just need to get him a check. So if you'd like to go. the year Andrea received. It's a nice it is. Very it's very nice. nice. So, you know, at this point, if she's a semi-finalist in the region or not, uh, they announced those at that that night. Announced a regional finalist, and then the finalists, and then go on to the next stage. Then they pick from there. So, 
I think this is a great recognition. Ms. Mrs. Christie will be a part of the Kansas Exemplary, Exemplary Educators Network. I will be able to go to different trainings around and visit other schools. So it's, it's a great program. I say we nominated her, whether all the work was on her. It's quite a lengthy nomination process, and there's a lot of work to do to write narratives and things. So we just signed a paper, basically, write a letter. So. Now, a book study. We're going to participate in this book study this year. Mm -hmm. the, the Travis and I are. Several books. Uh, it's called You Went in the Locker Room First. Uh, John Gordon and uh, Mike Smith, who's the head coach of the Atlanta Falcons. If you'd like to participate in the book, it's a great book. So I do want to bring that up. Um, Mr. Olive already covered enrollment, Tiger Pride Night. Football lights, equipment is being built. Uh, uh, installers have been out to look at things and take measurements and uh, get it. Details. Uh, so things are well underway there. Uh, we're purchasing a minivan as part of our capital improvements plan. I think it's uh, roughly 18.5. Uh, Jim Green found one uh, for us, 26,000 miles of Dutch uh, minivan. Told him anything but red. <laughs> <laughs> Minivans is the only thing that lose the job. <laughs> <laughs> So he does have one purchase. We've got to insure it. He's going to pick it up tomorrow. In fact. So that will replace some of our aging vehicles. Uh, the remaining maintenance items that have been in uh, installed the pump. I don't know if they need to rework some of the plumbing in there. Uh, but it, it's here. The equipment's here, and they've been in working on it. Uh, uh, they came back. Uh, you know, we were kind of concerned that this ride that it was very low. They came in and remeasured some things. They didn't have some things right. Uh, we've had no change orders. So I, my guess is they're going to lose money on this deal. We're, we're almost there. Uh, updated some furniture. We're working on carpet in six classrooms. Uh, that's been an adventure. We're cutting it way too close uh, this weekend. There's things down so carpet is in we just gotta get it here and install it Friday and Saturday and Sunday. Who's putting in carpet again? Uh been long day. Uh, I had to include this one um, just so you know um, Senate Bill twenty two uh, relates to open public records. You may recall in the news issues with former Secretary of State and emails, uh, using private emails. It happened at our state level. Uh, budget director was emailing lobbyists about the budget before it had even been presented to legislators, and that was addressed. So public elected officials, if, if they are discussing business of the governing body uh, through private email it's subject to open records. If Carl uh, emails uh, Mr. Oliver or something to, to your neighbor about the school district budget, that email could be subject to open records. You know, of course if you're emailing me it's school district email, but your private email is now subject to open public records if it's discussing school business. So if somebody complains about the coach and you tell that person what you really think of the coach, it's, there's a lot of, uh, I think, unintended consequences in there. Now, how they go about getting those records is this might be a legal challenge. I did want to bring that up to you, but that is a change in law. It seems rational that uh, on one hand it doesn't seem quite fair on the other hand. 
until I have my report. Back up. Was there a target date on the football lights? Uh, six weeks is what it said. It's looking like the first week of September is when that's going to be done. So we will, and what have you done on the junior high football game? We haven't. Uh, one, but we're, option one is to get a temporary you know, generator light stand and use the other three lights that are there. Option two is to play at NAS. We just flip flop. This year we'll go to NAS. Next year they'll come to us. Uh, I'm guessing that's what we'll have to do because if we're that close to installation, obviously the poles are going to be down. So we're going to be in the midst of that. So do we for sure have enough kids to play? To play junior high? Yeah. No. Not for sure. Oh, no. We won't know until first day of practice. For sure. You know, we'll have a better idea this week. Still to I sure hope so. Yeah, we we were in a position where we had to. We're on our own. We've got eight kids. And we're gonna make a go of it. And you said if you got six, we play with six. So the spices they had. They said five. Yeah. And then if they combined, then it was gonna be three or four. So. Those spice was out of the mix completely, so they, they are co op crops. Yeah, not a good situation. We don't want to leave our kids without an opportunity to participate. Thank you. Going into executive session. I'll tell you what the, the, the contract. The contract item is uh, uh, This is Hacker for senior class sponsor. So that's what we need the executive session for that or something else. So we can skip that. Madam Vice President, I move to accept Mrs. Hacker as the senior class sponsor. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to accept Mrs. Hacker as the senior class sponsor for 2016-17. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carried. I have a question about. Did they find a replacement for the para for Andy? Yes, uh, Marsha Crisp. Okay. We're still going to move the para to hire in our aid position. Bilingual aid. So I'm not going to fill it. Nobody has anything? Bring to the board. Accept a motion of adjournment. Second. We move and second in to adjourn. All those in favor, say aye. Second. All opposed, nay. Motion carried.